and then Todd will take and add comments to the back and the front and make it make it complete. Hi, everybody. Welcome to the Pre-Accident Podcast. Oh, yeah. Todd will make it complete. That's my whole job, making it complete. That's what I'm going to do. I'm Todd Conklin, your host. You can call me Todd. Many, many others in the past have, and many in the future probably will. But uh, either way, I'm sure glad you're listening to the podcast in February of 2017. Can you believe it? All right, we're in 2017. We're, we're now in it, man. January's over. It's gone. We're deep into the bowels of February, um, and I mean that pun intended, if there is a pun there. You have to hunt for the pun, but there must be a pun somewhere. Um, I, I don't even know what to say. I had high hopes for 2017, and now I don't know if my hopes are as high. I'm a little freaked out right now. I'd say I was scared, but I don't know if scared is the right word. Freaked out seems like. it's just The world's getting to be this crazy place. What in the crap is going on? And more importantly, why in the crap is it happening? And uh, why am I caught trying to do stuff in the midst of all this? Ah, ah, we can talk about that later. There's plenty to talk about. We'll have lots of information which we can share with one another as we progress through. This podcast is interesting. Um, I, I bet you a nickel I call it Breakfast in Beijing. Just bet you. I kinda, I, this, my gut's telling me that's what it's going to be called. We're going to go on a little journey here. And we're going to look at a uh, hop as it exists in China. But before we do, let me walk you through January for me. January was a, I don't know how your January was. Um, mine was crazy. It was, uh, I would say that January um, was a month that I got to go out and see the good in people uh, worldwide twice. Because once was not enough in January, twice. I got to do it twice. So my January, I should tell you about um, so it started out, I went to, uh, Southeast Asia and did a little work and then hung out with some friends, had an excellent time with my friends, John and Saran. Uh, what a great time. Um, and then, uh, I finished up a book. So I, I didn't really want to write another book so much, but I, I, I was kind of in a position where, um, I was motivated to do so. Not by money and fame. Oh, no. That's uh, that's not what happens when you write safety books. Ask anybody who writes them. But more by the fact that the topic seemed really important. So, so the book is on fatalities and serious incidents or SIF, uh, serious incidents of fatalities or fatalities or workplace fatalities or catastrophic failures or whatever the crap you call them. Um, it's interesting. And, and what I did was kind of succumb myself, seclude myself in a position where I could actually just kind of hammer this out. It's already at the editor right now. Hopefully they'll do a better job than they did on the last one. God, that's a long story. Uh, you know, the last one is in re-edit because the publisher didn't realize that the edited version was not the published version. So now they're re-editing and trying not to change pagination, whatever that means. Um, but this one, it, it's in the editor now. And this book's really interesting. And... And probably a little bit controversial. The readers who've read it um, have commented that it's going to uh, – uh, what is the word they used exactly? It's going to shake some people up a little bit. And it, I, I sort of alluded to this in the previous podcast. You probably heard me talk about it, but I, I looked at a whole bunch of fatalities uh, in a short period of time this last year. In fact, I'm I'm working on one now, and I worked on one last week as well. But I did like 16 fatalities in in 60 days or something like that. It was um, it was really remarkable. Um, when I look at a fatality, I I usually help the company do a couple things. One is there's a really strong tendency to investigate how we failed to prevent the fatality. But that means we're going to investigate things that should have happened but did not happen. And that's just not very helpful. And so I try to help direct companies so that they don't look at their failure to prevent the event. They, they look at the event itself. And then I go to sort of what Decker calls a restorative position. And, and I think he's right on this. I think that when a bad thing happens in your company – the the best you can hope for is is restoration. 
Um, you you want to take the people from where they are and restore their faith and ability and belief system in the fact that they can do high-risk work safely again. In, in fact, not just safely again, but better than they did it beforehand. But to do that, it's really not a process of punishment. It's not a process of throwing everything out and starting again. It's really a process of restoring the organization because mostly organizations don't have these serious, serious incidents and catastrophic failures. And and so you have to kind of think, well, then that means the serious incident is in fact kind of an outlier event. It's a, it's an anomaly. It's it, it's it's produced by a system that's not supposed to produce the anomaly, but that's kind of how anomalies work. And, and that's what this book talks about. The book's in two sections. Um, one section looks very clearly at um, sort of our failure to prevent bias, and it talks a lot about how we spend uh, uh, just a ton of time completely focused on kind of freaked out by the fact that we failed to prevent the event. And then the second half talks about really the notion that what we actually do is build systems that have controls, they have safeguards and defenses that actually manage away the ability for the fatality to happen. Um, maybe I should say that better. We build systems that fail safely. We don't try to prevent the failure from happening. We, we actually build systems that know the failure will happen, and when it does happen, then we fail as safely as we possibly can. I, I'll do a whole entire podcast on this because I, I think I should. I mean, that's that's a definitely a big topic, and this book's going to come out, and, and it's really the first book of its type to to have this discussion. It, it's, it's um, yeah, I think it is going to shake some people up, and it's, it's a little controversial. I, I'm really... Excite. I'm worried because a lot of people are selling fatality prevention programs that tend to sort of do the same stuff we've always done, just harder or more aggressively or more carefully. And I'm pretty sure that the things we do for prevention are really important. They're just not sufficient enough to actually manage an outlier, an anomaly. So we can talk about that. What else is going on? That was a big part of of that January is I, I probably spent two, two weeks kind of just focused directly on that. And then if that's not enough, I decided I probably should go around the world again. And I went to Europe and worked with a pharmaceutical company and pharma's fun. It, a lot of you listening to this are from pharma. I love pharma because the line between quality and safety is really skinny. It's it, almost non-existent. And pharma has a really good understanding of compliance they also know that compliance in and of itself is not sufficient. And so pharma is an amazingly interesting group to work with. So so the first half I was in Asia. The second half of January I was in Europe. So And then I got to come home. And that's now, which is really, really good because I'm excited about being home for a while. That's going to be super, at least home being North America at least. So that will be fun. That's good. What else? Um, man, thank you for all the interest in the uh, – the uh, learning team workshop that's going to be in Vegas in March. Uh, wow. We're even kind of talking about expanding it if we have to. But uh, if you're interested in that, check out the podcast on it. It talks in great detail about it. Um, you're more than welcome. And I got to tell you, any effort you spend in getting better at learning operational information from the worker, the payoff is super, super high. There's also a lot of uh, action around the Decker visit that's going to happen in June. Now, it's going to align with the HPRCT meeting, but uh, I think Decker's going to have three or four other um, speaking events. And I think it's going to be, if I understand this right, and he'll correct me, I'm sure, but I think it's Decker and I are going out and doing a day. And so I'll probably, you know, set up the tables and the projector and then clean up afterwards. I don't no, I think I think I actually have kind of a big role in this, but we'll talk about that as it progresses. But but lots of excitement around that. So so there's a bunch going on. I mean, it's all really great. But but let's go to the podcast. I mean, that that's kind of why you're listening. This podcast is it's it's Bob Edwards and Bob's going to talk about hop, you know, he talks about hop a lot. And if you don't know hop, hop is human and organizational uh, improvement or performance, sorry, but uh, that'd be hoy. So hop is performance. And he's actually in China 
with our friend Gary Tang and a couple other people too. I love the fact that they're at breakfast. Breakfast is um, a special time in China. If you've not been there, they really know how to do breakfast. If you like chicken feet and dim sum, you will love breakfast in China. You'll love it. Eat it up, baby. So without any further ado, here's Bob Edwards. And listen carefully to this podcast because I think you'll find it pretty interesting. Here is Breakfast in Beijing. So, Todd, I'm here with uh, with Gary Tang and Cole from EFC, um, and we're in a restaurant here in Beijing this morning, and I uh, wanted to take just a few minutes to talk with both of these gentlemen about what is happening here with um, HOP and with learning teams uh, in China. It's pretty exciting stuff. And so, uh, if you would just take a moment, uh, Gary and Cole, to uh, introduce yourselves to the audience. Hey, Todd, it was a long time since... I think two years ago we met in the U.S. and this time I think I'm very lucky to have a chance to connect with Bob again. And yes, everyone, uh, my name is uh, Gary Tan from EFC, which is a China-based uh, consulting firm. We provide uh, environmental health and safety consulting service among the uh, region. So basically, our services are in China. And the hub, I think, when I was two years ago, when I still was in GE, then I had a chance to uh, learn about the hop. Then I think this is a very good program, and it's very fitting with our current safety and administration policy on preventing severe accidents. So I immediately would like to apply this uh, hop uh, process and, uh, into our uh, consulting services. And now I think we just had a, a very good starting to promoting the hop concept among the uh, China local and the uh, more national company with sites in China. And I think this is a very good beginning since this time we just had a, a hop presentation by Bob in our uh, eighth international safety forum. And this is the eighth, the eighth. Yeah, forum, this is right? the eighth forum. This is a biannual national uh, level. Uh, so its impact influence is very big. And there was probably more than 200 people in there yesterday when we were talking. Right? Yeah, our sub forum is 200 people, but the national, the, the first day, this is three days uh, foreign and exhibition. And the the total uh, people, I think, is around uh, 500 people. Right. All from, uh, EH, from EHS professionals from different companies. What I thought was really interesting about yesterday is that. Um, after I did my presentation that you helped me with, with the translation, then we we spent time with other people who are starting to use HOP yeah. in their organization. And they gave examples and they told how it's how it's working. So I thought that was a really good idea too. So we spent a half a day out of this conference just talking about HOP and learning teams. Yeah. And uh, as you know, if you heard from the news and others, other sources, there are... Um, Many big accidents happen in China. So our uh, China safety administration, like OSHA, we also have the China OSHA. They are very, you know, care about this severe accident. That's why we also introduced the hot concept to our uh, safety governments. So they are also interested in and willing to collaborate with us to promote the hop in the next year among these those state-owned company. We call it SOE. Oh, okay. Yeah. I also found that in the uh, w- you know we you had uh, uh, you had me do two days of training Monday and Tuesday, and in the training uh, we did the uh, simulation with the learning team. Yeah. And I have to say, one of the best simulations we've ever done. The questions that were asked fit very very nicely as we did the practice session. Uh, into like Todd, like you've been, we you know we 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 talked about this a bunch. You taught us to ask how instead of why, and um, the practice simulation went really really well. They had maybe five or six pages of good questions and answers from the uh, from the simulation. So I think it fits very well into how your safety professionals think. They they want to have the more complete story. Yeah, I think. Hop really change our mindsets. It's a very good philosophy to change our traditional thinking on safety. It's definitely redefining our safety. So I think we provide a regular for some of our more national company, EHS professional in China. 
and their concept, they're they are willing to accept the new things. So Hop is very good, you know, source for them to understanding. And also, Hop helped me as well. When I learn about a Hop, then I realize uh, some of our thinking is wrong. Previous, as we like, for example, we misunderstanding what's the difference with uh, air and violation. We put a air equal to violation previously, and always uh, easily doing the root cause analysis with very e uh, like one root cause, but the actually is not linear results. It's a very, very multiple factors behind the causes. Good. So, Cole, this is um, uh, my first time to meet you. Yeah. yeah. So, uh, first, first of all, thanks for your time as well this morning. So, what are your thoughts about uh, HOP and uh, and the learning teams as you're starting to implement this here in China? Yes, I, I you know, I, I missed the first day's training, but the next day I joined the uh, HOP learning team. And so, you know, it's, it's a very good, uh, you know, learning team is very good, and uh, it's it's very good uh, process and it's uh, quite a new idea uh, methodology for me to to see the uh, uh, to think about the EHS in different uh, eyes and also if I, I, I understand I realize I use, use if I use the uh, hop learning things methodology to investigate the uh, accident it will make the people comfortable mm -hmm. and I I will get a, get a better result. Right, right. It's very good. And, and and you were telling me that before we did this, you were thinking maybe it's difficult. Yeah. Uh, right. Before I before I joined the uh, hop uh, training, I think uh, hop maybe is very complicated uh, methodology. It takes a lot of time to learn. But I only take one day's uh, hop learning time training. That's I think it's quite simple. It's very easy to use it. Uh, using uh, almost everyone can uh, can use these methodologies, and and it's very good. Uh, it's very easy to handle. Uh, good, good. That that's encouraging to hear too, because um, it, you know if if the, I think probably the one of the hardest things I see leading learning teams is overcoming some of the old ways of thinking. But the process of learning, the process of asking questions and listening and doing a learning team, is is easy. Right. Yes, yes. The story may be complicated and complex and messy, but the but the process is easy. Right? Yes, yes. Yeah. We we use a very easy way to release a very complicated story. Yeah. And and then we can tell the whole story to our management team, and and uh, recommend a very good uh, improvement action. Right. So maybe that's a no no low cost, but it's a very good. Uh, re it's a real. We, we know what is the real problem, and right. we need our improvement direction. Good, good. So, what are the next steps? What do you see as the next steps here in uh, in China as you move this forward? I think in yesterday's sub four and a half, we have a very good. Uh, um, it's a good uh, executive director and uh, one of the executive director from the U.S. China Chamber, right? I remember he's very interested on the hop and would like to organize a one day's hop training. I think. Todd, I think we can have you next time together with Bob here because uh, U.S. China uh, Chamber is very interested in the hot concept. Right. They want to promote the U.S. company in China here. Right. We we even talked about uh, yesterday with the uh, the conversation around power companies, electric electric companies, um, having some special conversations since there's so many U.S. companies uh, that are electric power companies that are using hop now. So connection with um, uh, with your power companies here. Um, yeah, yesterday's sub yesterday's forum we have uh, state grade, the state grade and the uh, Da Tang uh, power industry. This yeah. is the biggest uh, I think the corporation in the world as well. Right. So Todd we may have to bring uh, Stephanie Swindle over here to help uh, explain how the power companies are doing this. So we'll have to combine her uh, southern uh, southern draw with the uh, the Chinese culture and see if they can uh, see what they think about that. Yeah. Yeah. So I told I I, I just think it's exciting to see the collaboration that's happening and um, and that we're all getting smarter together. Yeah. Right? And I'm very confident that as you do this more and more here, that we're going to learn from you. Also, we're going to learn. Well, thank you. Ways. I think uh, we'll be very honored to be the first practitioner in China to promoting hop. We're lucky. We know Bob and, and Todd. Ah, good. Well, we're, we also are very fortunate to know you guys. And 
Um, so any other thoughts? Cole, what are you thinking as far as the, the future of this way of thinking? You think this will continue to grow? Yes, I think you know, hop is a very, uh, very good methodology and very easy to understand. And when I complete the uh, training, a lot of our classmates, uh, they have very good feedback. And they said, okay, th- when they go back to their factory, they, they need to pra- practice this uh, hop methodology mm-hmm. to make sure to to change their, their people's minds. Right, and that was the most important thing that, that I did nearly, I guess, four and a half years ago. I can't keep track of time anymore, but when, when Todd taught me, the most important thing that he had me do was go do a learning team now so I can practice so that I would not be afraid to try it later. Let's do one right now. Yeah. So I think that's good. They can go back. They can practice. They can try. They'll learn, right, yeah. and they'll get better, mm-hmm. right? So what kind of challenges do you see? Uh, as far as moving forward, I mean, this is a big country, lots and lots of industry. Yes, that's actually the one of the big challenges we were facing is uh, this uh, very new topics. People don't know, right? So we need to practice at the beginning. They can change their mindset. So I think one of the efforts we need to continue to promote hop concepts. Yeah, right. Because uh, it's very difficult for them to accept the new concepts. Right. This is, this, this is like a hop. Right. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's about one step at a time, right? Yeah. One step at a time. One thing that I've learned since uh, I've got to spend some time with uh, with you here in China is that the Chinese culture is also patient, and they will take and take one step and another step, and they get better and stronger. And so I'm encouraged by the fact that they were so thoughtful, and in the training yesterday. At the end, when you were asking for, for questions, there were lots and lots of questions, yeah. which is very good, right? The questions means we're thinking about it, and uh, if nobody has any questions, then I, I don't know if it made sense. So yeah. I was encouraged by all the questions. As you know, the hop is, lo- is not like a traditional programs. We have temples, we have tours. Right. But it's more like a philosophy mindset and change. Right. And we're using learning team as one of the approach to change the mindset. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, you know, the podcast never ceases to not amaze me. Is that right? That seems like a double negative. I'm always amazed by the podcast. There's more active voice. Man, I don't even know how to do this anymore. Ah! I thought this was uh, super interesting. I think the whole glimpse into um, the new view as it relates and moves more globally is really interesting. I'll make no bones about it. This did not start in North America. It, it's, it's taken longer to diffuse these ideas in North America. It really started in England, really, and, and I think it took its roots very quickly in the Scandinavian countries. Um, Holland played hard early. Europe adapted pretty early. Australia adapted really early. New Zealand was right there with it. We're sort of kind of moving along at the back side of this a little bit, I think. But it's moving. And that's probably more important than where or how or why. It's making progress forward. And China is in a really frightening place historically with their safety. I mean, how many times have you picked up the news and... Multiple people, multiple, multiple, major catastrophic, lots of fatalities, you know, in mines or on platforms, on construction sites. They care now. I think there's an opportunity there if you're thinking about looking at New View and moving it across the world. If you have a consultancy or or you're a trainer or whatever you do. I, I also think there's an opportunity there morally and ethically to really build a global sense of of justice around workplace safety and reliability. And that is the most interesting thing that I can think of uh, at so many levels. Just read a really interesting article on uh, on a super resilient computer system that belongs to a construction company somewhere that's ran nonstop without failure for the longest time any servers ever run anywhere in the world. And it just emphasized, those of you who work in this industry know exactly what I'm talking about. The rest of us, it's a computer that just didn't ever stop. It never broke down. It, 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 they replaced stuff, but it was so resilient. That notion of systems resiliency is really attractive to me. 
at so many levels. And and that's what I think is so exciting. Thanks to Bob. Nice work. I love the fact that it was in a cafe to at breakfast. That's perfect. Thanks to you. Um, if you've got suggestions or ideas, it's time. I've got some great ones. For all of you who read the uh, podcast notes that said I would mention your name, uh, this is now, here it comes, your name. Uh, gosh, Ben, you were the first, but there were bazillions of others behind you. I'm never going to write a little secret code in there again because too many people read the notes. I didn't think anybody read them. So now I'm kind of amazed. I'll take more time when I write them. Um, until then, though, that's the podcast for today. Have as much fun as you possibly can. Learn something new every single day. Make that your challenge for this year. And for goodness sakes, be safe. <laughs>